onto the stage with an impressive record. 20 victories, just one defeat. 16 wins coming by way of knockout. The former Olympian, please welcome from Ponce, Puerto Rico, Damas y Caballeros presentando, Carlos Negron. And his opponent, with also an impressive record, 19 wins, 17 of those coming inside the distance, opposite one blemish, a United States Olympian, ranked number one by the WBC. He hails from Glendale, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dominic Trouble Brazil. And in the center, ladies and gentlemen, the president and CEO of TGB Promotions, the promoter for Saturday night's event, Mr. Tom Brown. Our co-main event is 12 rounds for the WBC Super Welterweight Championship of the World. First of all, please welcome here to Barclays Center with a record 27 wins, 21 of those coming by way of knockout against two defeats. He is the former world title challenger making another attempt at a world title from the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Tony Superbad Harrison. And his opponent in 31 bouts, he's perfect. 31 victories, 15 of those coming by way of knockout. He is the reigning and defending WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World from Houston, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Jermel Charlo. And our main event, PBC on Fox this Saturday from here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Features 12 rounds for the interim WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. First of all, please welcome to the stage with an impressive record, 28 wins, 14 of those coming by way of knockout against one loss. Joining us from Russia, ladies and gentlemen, Dami Gaspada. Please welcome Matt Korobov. And his opponent, he is perfect, 27 victories, 21 of those coming by way of knockout. The former super welterweight champion of the world, and he is the reigning and defending interim WBC middleweight champion, also hailing from Houston, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jermall Charlo. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our six combatants for PBC on Fox. And now to continue with the press conference, let's bring up from Fox Sports, Heidi Andrew. Hey everybody, welcome to Brooklyn. We are live on Fox Sports 2. Hello guys, Dominic, we're gonna start things off with you since you and Carlos Negron are gonna start things off as we begin this partnership with the PBC and Fox Sports. First question for you, you are the mandatory for Deontay Wilder. Why would you take this fight now and risk that position? 
Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Heidi, how are you doing? Um, I think uh, in this situation, fighting a guy like Carlos Negron is, is, is a stepping stone to a guy like Deontay Wilder. Same size, same stature, he's got Olympic pedigree, so it's almost like a, a, you know, a, a rough edge or a rough sketch for, for the title fight. Um, and on top of that, I've been off for a year now, so stay in the rhythm of things, get things going, dust off some cobs if they're there, but uh, just uh, stay busy. With that said, you have made comments, uh, and Carlos, I'll direct this question to you. You've made some comments that you're going to fight next for that green belt. Do you think, Carlos, he's overlooking you in any way for this fight? Pues mira, este, primero que nada, gracias a todos los que se dieron cita. Este, bien agradecido con el señor. Este, pues Domini, tremendo boxeador. Este, yo vengo a hacer mi, el plan. El plan mío es ganar. O sea, voy a hacer todo lo, lo necesario para salir con la victoria, porque si estoy aquí es por un propósito. Y verán el sábado que van a ver un, un nuevo Carlos Negrón. Gracias. He just basically wants to thank everybody for being here today. Uh, wants to thank Dominic and um, that he will fight on Saturday, come Saturday, and people are going to see a very different Carlos Negron that night. Tony Harrison, you have said that, he, well, actually, your opponent has said he's not Jared Hurt, and he was referencing you and how well you did in the first part of that fight. Is, Jamal, is, is he actually, is Jamel a better fighter than Hurt or not? Uh, you, you know what? I, I, you know, I, I definitely think he's more technically sound, for sure. The more technically sound fighter. You know, uh, you know, that's, that's a hard question to ask me. I think I'll be able to answer that better come, come, you know, come Saturday night. You know, so I'm just looking forward to, you know, uh, a good show and a good outing. I'm pretty sure, you know, it's going to be an awesome fight, man. Explosive between both of us. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Jamel, a big payday looms. I. Uh, with Jared Hurd, we saw you obviously hop into the ring with him. Um, in terms of this fight, are you looking to outdo the performance of Tony Harrison against Jared Hurd? I mean, I don't care what Jared Hurd did against Tony Harrison. I'm a different fighter. I mean that. I stand by that. And did they'll see Saturday night what I mean by that. You know, it's, I'm not the same guys that they, I, they didn't grow up in my era. I grew up in a different era and a different genre of boxing. So they'll see that. Matt, we spoke earlier this week. Uh, you told me that you were sleeping when you got the phone call that you would be taking this fight. Uh, you'd be moving up, rather, to the main event. Are you prepared? I mean, considering the fact that you've had just such a short time and this is such a big opportunity for you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you to everybody who was involved to make this happen. That was such a surprise for me. Like you said, I was sleeping, preparing for my workout and stuff. I was in training. I was in preparation. So anyway, and I get it right away. This fight, you know, not everybody can get this chance and opportunity to fight for the title. Also, I would like to thank Charlo team to accept me as an opponent, you know. So I respect that, you know. So trying to show my best Saturday night. Jamal, when I spoke to Ronnie Shields earlier this week, he said you were leaving the spa when you got the phone call. What, what did, went through your mind when you heard that you would be now facing Matt Korobov? We got work to do. And what work did you do? What did you we do? got more work to do. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about an unprofessional uh, individual in boxing who, who didn't um, make the, the, the right requirements for the test. But I didn't let my, my um, head down or nothing. I, I knew that we would make another fight. So I want to thank Matt Carvajal and his team for stepping up to the plate. And um, it's going to be a great fight. Certainly looking forward to it. We'll now take this opportunity to open it up to our members of the media who have joined us here at the Barclays Center. Who has the first question? Hey, Jamal. Hope all is well. Do you think Matt Korobov actually presents a tougher challenge than your original opponent, Willie Monroe? Like I said once before, every fight is tough. Every fight is tough. Um, I, I'm not sleeping on this guy. I'm sleeping this guy. Who do you think is better from everything you've seen? Every fight is tough. 
I have to figure out a different game plan for each and every fighter that I step in the ring with. And I know he's coming to fight. I know he's coming to get, bring it, bring it, you know, everything that he possesses in the ring. And, and it's my duty not to let that happen. Jamal, in terms of preparation, what do you have to do when you get a last minute opponent like this? Um, <clears throat> he was getting ready for this fight. He was on the undercard of this fight. So for him to step up, I know this is a, like one in a lifetime opportunity for him. So I know he's coming in with everything and, and I'm well prepared. So I, I want to just, you know, get in there Saturday and, and show my professionalism. Question is for Tony. Tony, how you doing? You looking chill? You were smiling when you're doing the face off before. Uh, I'm curious if you perceive that a lot of people are seeing you as the mega underdog. I was seeing some uh, stuff on Twitter, people saying, oh, people disrespecting Tony Harrison. I certainly don't. I've seen you in very tough, uh, you know, rugged guy, battle tested. But do you perceive that people are seeing you as a mega underdog? And if yes, does that kind of piss you off and motivate you? Uh, I mean, you know what, man? I, you, I, I'm pretty sure 100 percent that the only thing that's gonna be undefeated till the day we die is social media. So I don't even, you know, I don't even, I don't even feed into the shit half of the time. I don't even, I don't pay no attention to it. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, my preparation was great. You know what I mean? Um, I think, uh, like I said, uh, they, you know, the pedestal is high for him. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm just gonna go in there, relax, and just do what I, you know. Do what I train to do, man, in that fight. So my, my pedestal ain't, ain't that high. So, you know, I'm just I'm just here I'm just here to get paid, I guess. You know. Uh, my question is for Dominic. Dominic uh, Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Uh, what do you know about Carlos and and maybe some dangerous parts of his game that he brings to the fight on Saturday night? I mean, uh, you got to look at his appearance. Carlos, big guy, man, six six, about two thirty. Um, somebody that size has got to have a great jab. He's got a great amateur pedigree. Fought in the 08 uh, Beijing games. I got a lot of respect for the guy. Uh, he's, he's 21. I'm 19 and 1, so it's not a big split there. I mean, we, we stand eye to eye. You saw us stand off a little while ago. We're eye to eye, man. It's, it's, this is the first time I've fought somebody as big, his stature and size. Um, but at the same time, I don't think he's got the experience that I got in the pro ranks. I've fought some, uh, some, some decorated guys, some guys with some great credentials and some great resumes. Um, Carlos is going to be in for a good fight Saturday night. Some of the odds makers on, have made him a fi you a fifty to one favorite in this fight. Are you aware of that? And what would you say to that? I'm not aware of that. Thank you for letting me know. Though um, <laughs> it's uh, I think it's one of those things. It's that I've I've been active. I'm the WBC mandatory, uh, but not taken from anybody. This is the heavyweight game. One punch can change everything. I plan on landing that punch Saturday night. Uh, Mel, you've scored some vicious knockouts here at Barclays Center. Charles Hadley, Erickson Lubin. How do you top that? Just more knockouts. I mean, I'm just going to get in there and do what I got to do for 12 rounds. Um, and okay. Jamil Shalo should prevail. I'm going to be the best that I can be. I've trained. I put my life on the line every time, and I'm not going to stop. And my, the stakes are, it's just whatever. You know, I don't have, I'm not on no pedestal. I look at every fight, zero and zero. You can, you can ask me the same question last time I fought. It was the same thing. I don't care about that all of the extra media and stuff that's going on. I come to fight, he come to fight, and we should see who win. Xavier Porter, BrooklynFights.com. This question is for Tony Harrison. If you're successful on Saturday, are you looking to unify with Jared Heard? I mean, but, but I, I think uh, this, the fight going on Saturday, all roles lead to him. Between me or between him, all roles lead to him. Uh, nothing I want more in a fucking rematch with that guy and you know I'm pretty sure you know that's what that's that's you know that's he, he wants his unification so you know I think all roads lead to that to that space for, for the both of us we have time for one more question question for Dominic Brazil um you mentioned you see um similarities in Deontay Wilder with Carlos Negron can you expand on that more like is it a power thing is it you know quickness when I say similar is I, I see a guy that's you know standing tall that moves a lot. It's got boxing skills. Um, some of the film that I saw on Carlos is, is a I like to call it ABC fighter. He throws a lot of one twos and really doesn't change and adjust. And we saw him on December first. That's all Deontay Wilder had. He threw a one two when he got frustrated. He threw another one two. 
when he, when he kept missing and kept missing, there was never an adjustment. That's, that's what I'm, I'm predicting Carlos is going to be able to do on Saturday. Um, you know, everybody keeps bringing up this Deontay Wilder situation. They say I'm chasing the belt. Of course I'm chasing the belt. That's only because Deontay Wilder's running. All right. Well, thank you all. We appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who made their way out here to Brooklyn, uh, to the Barclays Center, as we gear up for this big partnership. Right now, we are going to send things back over to Kate at the desk. But of course, be sure to tune in 1.30 tomorrow as the fighters make their way to the scale to make it official first Saturday. Kate, back to you.